Hello everyone, I am Benita from the Department of English, Holy Cross College. Today we are going to see about the poem Pulley written by George Herbert. What are the learning objectives of this lesson? Well, we want to give you an overview of the poem The Pulley and we want to show you how the two literary devices mostly used in metaphysical poetry, namely the conceit and the pun, are evident here in this poem. Now, the main theme of this poem is that it tries to examine the bond between God and man. And George Herbert, the metaphysical poet, uses a scientific analogy, a comparison, to give a meaningful balance of man's relationship with God. Now, who is the ultimate parent to humanity? God. He is the father and mother of humankind. The pulley, as we know, is an instrument used to pull something towards us. And God, how does he use this pulley to persuade man to come towards him? About George Herbert, born in 1593 and died in 1633, metaphysical poet is very famous for his choice of subject and use of rhetoric or words and he describes his poems as a picture of the many spiritual conflicts between God and himself till he made Jesus Christ his master and after following Christ he found perfect freedom in the service of Christ. His most notable works are the temple and the country parson. This is George Herbert. Coming to the poem, the first stanza goes like this. When God at first made man, having a glass of blessings standing by, let us, said he, pour on him, him refers to man, all we can. Now we may be because it is the blessed Holy Trinity comprising of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Let the world's riches which dispersed lie contract into a span. There is a pun in the word span which we shall see later. The meaning of these lines is very simple. When God created humanity as we see at the beginning in the chapter of Genesis in the Bible, he happened to have a cup of blessings. Now this is George Herbert's imagination and he thinks why do not, why don't we give everything good possible to humanity everything from the far-flung to wealth and riches let's all shrink it into one lifetime of man one human lifetime the second stanza so now we see this blessings flowing into man from god's loving hands one by one so strength first made a way then beauty flowed then wisdom honor pleasure when almost all was out god made a stay stay means he made he paused he stopped for a bit Perceiving that, understanding that, alone of all his treasure, rest in the bottom lay. Now, rest also has two meanings. There is a pun, as is used, as is wont, as is the custom of metaphysical poets. They use pun in their poetry. We'll see what's the pun later in the word rest. So, we see that first, God gave mankind strength. We need strength to grow. And then came out beauty, wisdom, and honor means nobility, morality. Okay. And then when he'd almost finished emptying his cup of blessings, he stopped a while, thought, and saw what was left behind. What was remaining behind was peace. That he didn't give man. Why? Because he said, for if I should, said he, bestow this jewel also upon my creature, he would adore my gifts instead of me and rest in nature, not the God of nature. So both should losers be. So wise is God. He realizes that if he gives man everything, including peace, man wouldn't think about loving God back because he has everything. He has no need for God anymore. And so in that case, there would be two losers. One, because it would be God, because he's losing his favorite creation, that is man. And of course, it will be mankind because we can never have perfect peace. Our ultimate goal is to go back to God. So Rob, George Herbert is trying to say that we shouldn't forget the miracle giver, the giver of all the gifts. We shouldn't just focus on the miracles and the gifts he gives, but we should focus on the source, 
the source of sovereign goodness that is God from which all the gifts and miracles flow. So let him keep the rest, God says finally, but keep all the rest that is all the other uh, blessings like, you know, honor, wealth, beauty. Let him keep that, but with repining restlessness. Repining is like languishing, uh, you know, not exactly at peace, griping and feeling a sense of incompleteness. Repining restlessness, let him be rich, but he will be weary. There's a paradox and that at least, you know, paradox is also another common literary device which the metaphysical poets use. And that at least, if goodness doesn't lead man, at least let, when he is tired and weary, may that toss him back to my heart. My heart, God's heart. So God thinks that let man have everything, honor, pleasure, wealth, but peace. Because then he will have a constant regret, some kind of a distractful longing and that will be only fulfilled by God. So when man is assailed and assaulted by, assaulted by trials and tribulations and tri travails of uh, human life, he will have a nagging desire in his heart to come back to God, his maker, creator, father and mother to find his peace. Now, there are some who will automatically by themselves out of uh, an obligation and duty and love for God, our Father, go to God. But mostly, they tend to forget. So for those, if pure moral goodness doesn't draw humanity to God, let exhaustion of this worldly riches, the weariness, the satiated feeling, may that bring humankind back to God. As I said earlier, we will focus on two elements of metaphysical poetry, which we can see in this poem. The first one, conceit. What is a conceit? It's a highly elaborate extended metaphor and it is a far-fetched comparison made between two things. Now, the metaphysical poets greatly popularized this device. Now, the title of the poem itself contains the theme of the poem. But other than uh, the word pulley being mentioned in the title, nowhere else in the poem is the word the pulley mentioned. What is pulley? It's a kind of power of force which is applied at one end of the object to pull the object which is lying at the other end. And here, rest or peace is that kind of a pulley which God is using as a leverage to draw mankind towards him. Now you know why the word pulley is the title. The next metaphysical device popularly used is the pun. Pun is a device where you have multiple coded meanings within one word. Let's see in the stanza one, let us pour on him all we can, let the world's riches which disperse lie, contract into a span. The word span, there is a pun on the word span. Span could mean a certain measurement of time. Here it is a length of man's life on earth. It also translates to meaning assess something, to work out something. Man tries to work out what he can do with all these blessings in his life. There is another pun. A pun is a literary device again, which is a play on words. When almost all was out, God made a stay, perceiving that alone of all his treasures rest in the bottom lay. Here the word rest, there is a pun played there. Re God decides to retain, keep back rest. Now here it has two meanings. The first meaning could be God decides to retain, keep back rest. Rest is peace. The second meaning is whatever is remaining in the glass of blessings, that is the rest, the remaining. So one is peace and the other is whatever remaining blessings God has in store for mankind. So there's a pun in the word rest. So as a conclusion we can see that how God has purposefully withheld, withdrawn this ultimate blessing of peace from man so that at least because of spiritual restlessness man will ultimately think with gratitude and love about God his father in heaven. And then when man is eventually tired and fed up and satiated with all the other blessings of wealth, honor, fame, riches and beauty, he thinks, no, I'm not finding my peace here. My peace lies with God. And that will pull, like the word pulley, you should remember that, pull him back to God's heart. And so 
people will turn back to God. So we see how indeed God our Father is a very omnipotent, of course, omniscient. Omniscient means he's all-knowing, wise and sagacious and prophetic too. He has done the right thing. What are the possible frequently asked questions here? What are the themes of the poem, the pulley? That is God's goodness and man's restlessness. And how was the pulley? Uh, by George Herbert, a metaphysical poem. There is paradox, there's philosophical thought, there is fun, there is conceit. And what is the relationship between God and man? A relationship where man sometimes is ungrateful, but God is always faithful and thinking of how to bring man back to his heart. And why did God withhold the gift of rest from man? So that at least that would bring man back to him. How does Herbert depict God's generosity in the pulley? We saw how God has almost emptied the entire cup of blessings for man. So we see that God is very generous to us always. Thank you.